We're about to uh, contact our uh, next our guest of the evening, and uh, Mike Dupree of Halloween Kills. Hi, this is Mike Dupree. Hey, Mike! Welcome to the Wise Guy Show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. How you doing? Doing really good. How are you guys making out? Good. So far, so good. A little humid out here, but we're doing all right. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same here in South Jersey. Oh, you're where? Oh, where wow. in South Jersey are you? Uh, Tuckerton. Oh, okay. It came in. I didn't even just, know. Yeah. It's yeah. just outside of Long Beach Island. Wow. Exit wow. fifty-eight. That's exactly. Right. I know. I know the park. Oh, that's like still, the back of my hand. That's like well, an hour welcome to New Jersey. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. just a little longer. But. Oh, so you're a New Jersey guy? I am. Now, how did a New Jersey guy over override 150 people who were auditioned for the role of the ventriloquist in Halloween Kills? How did that happen? <laughs> uh, brain damage from an early age. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, now, I got a call from a buddy of mine who is a uh, famous ventriloquist creator. His name's Conrad Hartz, okay. and he lives down in North Carolina. He said... Mike, I just tried out for a part in a movie, but I have a southern draw. They're looking for a ventriloquist, somebody that's, you know, fairly decent, but somebody that uh, is not famous yet or whatever, well-known. And I was doing stand-up at the Tropicana and that kind of stuff. So I tried out for it, not thinking I'd hear anything. But they called me right back and say, hey, could you do this? Uh, could you do some more uh, of your act or whatever? Nice. So I said, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, then they called me back and said, can you sing a song? And it just so happened it was uh, Shaving Cream by Benny Bell. I knew that <laughs> like the back of my hand. <laughs> oh, wow. So I sang that. And next thing I know, they're uh, saying, would you mind if we uh, did a Zoom call with a director, writer, producers? And uh, I said, Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. And uh, at that time, I thought it was just a little two-bit movie. It was called uh, Mob Rules, which they did back in, uh, I think, the 80s in England. And it was a horrible, horrible movie about uh, you know, a couple young guys, uh, hooligans that were uh, you know, real rowdy in this town and causing problems. I thought, what the heck are they doing this for? But I tried out for it anyhow. And then all of a sudden, when the Zoom call came up, I saw David Gordon Green, Danny McBride, Jason Blum, Malika Cod, and I thought to myself, this is bigger than I actually wow. expected. And sure enough, uh, Mob Rules uh, turned out to be a production title, that it was actually Halloween. <laughs> and you talk about the nervous. Uh, I'm not a nervous kind of guy, but when I saw all those people <laughs> come up i thought oh my goodness this this is it my one chance so that's great they asked me again to uh, sing the song shaving cream i sang it <laughs> and where i was supposed to say i stepped in that big pile of shaving cream <laughs> i added an expletive uh <laughs> i stepped in a big pile of sh 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 uh, like I do in the movie, and they started laughing. And uh, I saw Danny McBride sit back in his chair on uh, video, and I thought, you know what? I might have a chance at this. And uh, then they uh, concluded the, the call afterwards and said, uh, you may be hearing back from us. Uh, and about two weeks later, they did call me back, and they offered me the part. Nice. Oh, wow, that's nice. nice. Now, did Jamie Lee Curtis, did you, ever, did you meet her? I uh, I did uh, get to meet her, but I wasn't on stage with her. Uh, what, was, uh, she was not in my part. It wasn't until I was leaving and at the studio, I was uh, exiting and she was coming in. And we actually had to have uh, a little downtime with each other. She had a cup of uh, tea and I had a cup of coffee and we talked for a little bit. What a great lady she was. I got to say, nice. one of the nicest people you'd ever want to meet in your life. Nice. What you see on stage is exactly how she is in real life. 
Nice, nice. Well, let me tell you, I watched the movie. I, I'm a big Halloween fan, and uh, usually uh -huh. we, we wait till Halloween to get, you know, the actors that were in movies like that, but we have so many uh, characters and so many guests that we have lined up that we had to actually bring in a little Halloween in July, and uh, it was, <laughs> let me tell you, it, now, you're, you're, you're an actual ventriloquist. Do you Correct, yeah. Do you perform... Like locally, I mean, I, I've never, I mean, I'm not saying never heard of you. Um, I'm a big fan of ventriloquists, and uh, I was friends with um, uh, Otto and George. I was friends with Otto uh, and George. Otto and George, God rest his soul. Yep. What a great guy. Yep. Yeah, I've known uh, George for many, many years. Unfortunately, uh, he passed away young, but what a great guy. Yeah. I, I, I just did mostly uh, Tropicana. I was under contract with them. And I stayed there, but I did do uh, First Night Tom's River. Uh, I, I flew usually in the southern states. I did some uh, comedy there, but uh, I, I mostly stuck to uh, Atlantic City area. Right. And also, uh, Pete um, uh, Michaels. Pete Michaels. We were friends with Pete Michaels. I want to. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, he w I, I got to tell you, I, all the guys that have passed away. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you know, but let me tell you, I I, I met Otto and George in uh, in uh, Cha Cha's in uh, New York City, a little little Italy, uh, Mulberry yeah. Street, and uh, uh, you know, I would we were doing comedy shows with Bob Levy, and Bob knew them very well. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, but uh, uh, Pete Michaels uh, was a friend of mine uh, through the Johnny p show because uh he was actually uh his guest host i guess you want to say like on when johnny did his shows and and we became friends with pete michaels and uh let me tell you pete was uh i, I covid was a problem and we got him to come out of the house and i, I know he was dealing with some issues and uh he was so happy yeah. to have, have gotten out of the house to do our show and not too much longer after that he passed and i, I as much yeah. as uh, i think about it I, I know he's gone and i don't want to say uh, but it was an honor to have had him he we probably was were the last show that he did and uh and uh, wow. just such a nice guy i mean i i you could yeah. see pete was was dealing with issues at the time but I, he was just so yeah. happy we got him out of the house and uh i don't like i said it, it's just ventriloquist i just love ventriloquist and uh even uh, john peasy we're friends with john peasy um, yeah john's a great guy in fact he has one of my figures that i sold to him uh many years back and i've been trying to buy him from him <laughs> and it's a copy of the same exact figure that i used in halloween oh cool uh, it's a, another version of that but uh yeah john peasy great guy uh, i've known him for many years and same thing with Pete Michaels and his wife Stacy uh, still carries on his legacy, and we keep in contact through Facebook. But we also have the ventriloquist convention that's coming up on the 13th of July, and uh, I'm flying out to Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, oh. and uh, we're going to be meeting up with Terry Fader, uh, Jeff Dunham will be there, nice. Jay Johnson. Uh, Are you friends with Jeff Dunham? I think you know he's another one of my favorites. He's been a he's been I, a uh, I know him. Uh, we're not like real close by any means because we never really got to to be close or, or meet, uh, you know, on a first name basis. But we have met over the years, and uh, he he is a very nice guy too. I I, I got to give that to him. He is very inventive. He comes. He really pushes the envelope of the characters and the comedy, and it shows. Nice. But uh, yeah, he's a real nice guy. I really haven't met a nasty <laughs> ventriloquist. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if uh, there's one out there, but uh, usually they're real mellow, uh, decent people. Yeah. How long have you been doing ventriloquists? <laughs> Since I was about four or five years old. Wow! Wow! Uh, it goes way back to elementary school, uh, kindergarten when I first started. My parents bought me one of those. Uh, you know, Charlie McCarthy, Jerry Mahoney, figures Everyone. that were real yeah. popular in the yeah. Sears catalog back then. Wow. Well, let me ask you now, um, was there anybody who inspired you to become a French Oh, absolutely. You, uh, back in the day, Paul Winchell, who I, I had I remember. the pleasure. Yeah, I, he was the voice what show of was Tigger he? on uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh. 
He's one of, uh, in fact, Knucklehead Smith, one of Knucklehead his lead characters, Smith, right. is actually Tigger's voice. Oh. The funniest thing about Tigger, Tigger don't like honey. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same voice he used for that. So Paul Winchell was very big in uh, ventriloquism and kids shows. He was a big inspiration of mine, as was Edgar Bergen, of course. Uh, you had Jimmy Nelson, who was uh, real big at the time as well. He did all the uh, Nestle's commercials. Uh, he had Farfall and Danny O'Day. In fact, they had Danny O'Day. Uh, and Willie Tyler was another one that was real big in the, the circuit and, uh, back in the day. And you know, there's just so many, but uh, they were my main inspirations to actually do it. And I had a form of autism, which they didn't diagnose correctly back in the day. And I was real withdrawn. And with the ventriloquist uh, dummy that I had back then, it helped me cope and sort of somewhat overcome uh, my my Asperger's is what I wow. had. And I still have it, but it, it helps me. Uh, it had. And before then, you know, I was real withdrawn. But now, you know, I could get up in front of like a Tropicana, there'd be, you know, 3,000 people in the audience or whatever. Uh, and I feel more comfortable in front of 3,000 than I do in front of just one or two people. Oh, wow. wow. It's weird how that works. Are you performing <laughs> anywhere anytime? Sh uh, uh, do you have any gigs lined up? I uh, Actually, I have just put that on the back burner since uh, leaving Tropicana, and I have just been doing acting now. So I do acting. I also do TikTok videos. And also uh, YouTube videos. I have a garden channel that, uh, you know, I do a crazy garden show with a, a quirky neighbor that comes over. But I haven't really done any stand-up in a while. I did do a few benefits uh, within the last couple years. But the acting part, you know, the acting bug has hit me. And also radio. I've, I've done radio most of my life. So I, I, I still do that and voiceovers and uh, you know what not nice <laughs> something nice. to keep me busy <laughs> no only because we like uh, all our guests especially if you're from new jersey i mean uh and, and anytime you're uh appearing locally i mean uh you can go as far as atlantic city yeah, and know. pennsylvania yeah. and all we that stuff we yeah we we and plus we do our events we do events and uh i mean uh we'd love to see you and have you one night uh do a uh, maybe hire you to do a little ventriloquist yeah. for the we'll for you know but at one of our events but um i before that, uh, I just wanted to, if you have anything in Atlantic City, because we do go to Atlantic City a lot, it'd be, uh, yeah. always let us know. Yeah, if I have something coming up, like I said, I haven't really booked anything because I'm doing auditions for uh, movies and things of that now nature. Now you're a big actor now. You got into <laughs> how he, <laughs> yeah. he, he tried to dummy in the closet. Well, <laughs> but that's what, that, that, that was my next question now. Um, you, you went from virtual Chris, you were in a huge movie, and I really say it's a huge movie because it's the the continue you know it's the halloween uh, with jamie lee curtis anything with jamie lee curtis yeah. is huge now Absolutely. um how much did you pick up um as far as um uh that, wait before we go there before we go there did you ever do um uh anything with mtv no okay no, or vh1 in in a little skit no. Okay. Only because we have we do. Um, I, I I don't know. I just don't want to jump off the sh uh, off off track here. But <laughs> no, no. We, we have a, a little person that we have. Uh, is he's part of miniacs dot com, and uh, his name is Mark. And I hooked him up with an, a, a a gig where he had to play a puppet, and oh. the puppet came to real life, and there was the ventriloquist that was in the in the video and i was just like what are the chances because it was in the <laughs> yeah. local area i was like what are the chances it was you but uh if yeah. that wasn't you then you would remember it it was a vent it was a little person who they dress as a puppet and then he came to life obviously wow what a great idea yeah yeah and and the video <laughs> got over two million no the video got over two million views and i got him a good good payday for that wow yeah. nice. wow that's oh, great. Oh, are they called dolls puppets what are they uh, called they, I call them figures usually, but I'm not one of those temperamental guys. You can call them puppets, dummies, 
Dummy. You know, whatever you feel like it. There are some guys out there that, oh, mine is a figure and that's it. But (laughs) I'm not that way. I'm not temperamental. See, I was a uh, a lineman for the electric company, climbed poles, put wires up during storms. So I'm not temperamental at all. So you can't hurt my feelings. And (laughs) absolutely. uh, (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I I always thought they called them dummies. But but out of the two things we pick, it was a third. Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) sure. (laughs) But listen, I learned one thing in show business, whether you're a magician, a wrestler, an actor, uh, I guess a ventriloquist, (laughs) you all have your own personalities. And some of them could be pretty strange. So, oh, I, absolutely. I, yeah, I got to say, uh, um, you know, um, I be, I want to continue to what, what, what the point I was trying to make now that you um, did this Halloween kills um, and you like I said, you are a ventriloquist. You got into acting and got the part. Did you get a lot of, uh, of calls or, or recommendations to go uh, act or, or play uh, your part in, in other movies? Oh, absolutely. I've. Uh... <clears throat> In fact, that's how I got a lot of the uh, commercials that I did uh, was recommendations. People saw me and then I'm on uh, backstage, which is a uh, an actor's group that uh, uh, they, they look for certain parts and they have casting directors that go out looking for certain individuals. And I get a lot of jobs from that. But uh, I have had a lot of cold calls where they say, hey, I saw you in the movie. I see you on IMDb. Would you be interested in this? And in fact, I've been in several things. Uh, just recently, I won a People's Choice Award from A Silent Call. Anna Brunstein, she wrote uh, the short film, and it's airing now all over the country and all I, over I, the world. I saw that. A, a Silent Call, Can Anyone Hear Me? Right? Correct. Yeah, that's that's well, the one. I was going to ask you about that. Can you explain a little better what that was? Yeah, it's about a uh, a young guy who fell into uh, substance abuse. Oh. And his parents always tried to help him, and his uh, father passed away. And his father comes back in past tense uh, reading a letter. But uh, this, this gentleman uh, pulled himself up by his boot straps and made a better life for himself and his dream was to open up a uh, art gallery and he succeeded in the end he got away from the the drugs and i play a uh i actually play myself a ventriloquist with uh, one of my dummies and then i'm in there with doc g uh, who's a disc jockey from uh new jersey we uh we're playing in the scene together but uh i I, I felt bad because Doc G is the one that brought me in on this, and I'm the one that actually won the uh, the award, the People's Choice Award. Oh, oh nice! But they, uh, Anna Brunstein, she's a writer, producer, director. She has won so many awards with this film and so many accolades. Uh, she's she's done a great job, and a lot of red carpets around the country that she's showing up to, and I don't go to the ones out in california or out in the uh, west coast but anything on the east coast i said i'd go to but that was a lot of fun also i don't know if you're familiar with the gilbert diaries frank modica and paul veneer which you i'm sure you know paul oh paul the the tornado <laughs> yeah the 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 the, 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 the the human no wait what do they call him the the tor- i know they call him the tornado the co- comedian tornado yeah. The the comic tornado, something like that. I don't know. Paul, yeah. Paul, we do Paul. We had on our show before. He's a great musician too, by oh, the way. Yeah, he is. Paul, I'll tell you what. He he can ace anything. And what a great guy! You you wouldn't even know that he was in show business. He's just like the guy next door. Uh, real funny. <laughs> you, he, uh, he, but the, he could go on. <laughs> And just continue going on without stopping until you finally tell them to get off the stage. And you know who else is yep. like that? Uncle Floyd. Uncle Floyd oh, is like yep. that. Floyd Vivino. Uncle yep. Floyd. Yep. Yeah, and I worked with Floyd uh, first night Tom's River. He was. Uh, He's like a ventriloquist still in his own little way too. I guess you could put him. Yeah, in that his cat. little Pelham puppet. Uh, <laughs> Oogie. Oogie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He. Uh, <laughs> 
I, I remember that. That was uh, pretty humorous. We're back friends. In the day for we're me. friends with Uncle Floyd. Uh, good friend. He's actually an original Wise Guys. Just so you know, um, uh, Uncle oh, Floyd. Yep, yeah, we do some stuff with the original Wise Guys. Joe Causey from one hundred one point one CBS FM. He he was yeah. an original Wise Guy, and some of that are no longer with us. Vinny Vella, um, uh, Vinny Vella, and uh, John Cha Cha Cercia, my uh, my mentor, one of my mentors. Uh, just an amazing crew. Uh, that's what this show is actually came from. Uh, we we're a spinoff of them, and um, just uh, just amazing guys. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uncle Floyd. I actually tried to get. I was going to put together a video uh, before they were going to release Halloween. I do the song Shaving Cream where I sing, and I thought, how cool would it be to bring in Uncle Floyd, have him play the uh, keyboard. And me sing with my dummy and have a couple other uh, kids show stars from around the country to, to appear in it. And uh, I had a couple set up, but uh, we've never gone through with it yet. But uh, that would be a, a great idea to put out that little music video of shaving cream and uh, oh, now well. that the hype of the movie is over, I, I don't know if we'll we'll get a chance to do it now. Yeah. Well, Listen, we could always make things happen. We, if you're really interested, we we'll, we'll contact Floyd, and uh, you know uh, he's been good lately. He he uh, he's a fair guy, and uh, he understands that we're we're following in his footsteps, and uh, he's always been good yeah. to us. So, Uncle Floyd, uh, if you're listening, uh, and uh, he may be because he's, he is, he's just a great guy, and uh, we yeah, I spoke with his manager, and we were going to set something up, but uh, it never came to fruition. What what what? Did you speak to Joe? He has uh, I'm not certain what his name was. It oh. was through uh, an email. Yeah, it could have been Joe, but he Joe he has a he has a couple guys look out for him. But uh, yeah, yeah, but we, you know, um, and then uh, uh, this brings us to the the final portion of the interview. Though I have to ask, ask you, do you have any so, uh, social media? Uh, uh, oh wait, before we get into any further, I would like to thank John Terlizzi. For uh, putting this interview together, John uh, is a uh, a big My unofficial uh, manager. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a hustler. He's constantly uh, he's working guy. hard, getting everybody to get on, uh, get promoted, and uh, I give him a lot of credit for the work he does. He, he really uh, he does. Sure is a great guy. Yeah, and uh, I thank him for putting this interview together. But I want to ask you: Do you have any websites, social media pages you like to uh, like to incorporate in the show? Yeah, I uh, on uh, TikTok. I'm at Dupree Studios. I do uh, all antique audio equipment that I have in my collection. I tell a little bit about it. I also, one of the biggest things now, I've had over uh, 7 million views now, wow. is those automatic hypodermic injection guns that they used in the military to give uh, immunizations. I do that shooting into ballistics gel, and that's... That's, I mean, just skyrocketed with views. I do that, and then that's on, on TikTok, uh, YouTube. I'm in the garden with Mike Dupree, and I do the crazy little garden videos, informative, but uh, a little quirky too. <laughs> nice, nice. And to correct myself, Paul Veneer is the comedy tornado. Just want to comedy confirm tornado. that. I don't want to, yeah. Paul. If you're listening, I I, I did cover my you were ass. Close. And, you were uh, close. I was close. <laughs> I was close. Yeah, I call him. Yeah. Yeah, I get confused because um, we have another friend of ours. I call the 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 comedy hurricane because he's another oh, okay. one, that, and yeah. uh, that's another story. But um, I I do want to thank you so much for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity. And please, I I I beg you. Um, whenever you're performing in in New Jersey um, and and uh, or anywhere locally, uh, please let us know. Uh, please post it on our uh, Wise Guys Facebook group page because that's where all our uh, uh, members are. We have uh, twenty three thousand members and counting. And uh, I gotta say, or actually followers. Um, and uh, I I do want to uh, mention that. Um, if we could be there anytime, we'll be there. And uh, on behalf wow, of Joey Cat, it. especially Atlantic City, and we have a photographer. Yeah. He's in the studio here mm -hmm. with us tonight. He's actually filling in as a co-host. Uh, you need any <laughs> photographers? We got Scala photographers. The best, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Anthony yeah. Scala is the best. We got a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully next time uh, you guys interview me, I can be in the studio. 
We'll definitely put something together. How about maybe we could get closer toward the October Halloween time, which I nice. think it'll be Good a idea, nice treat. Fred. Good idea. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It sounds great. Well, thank it you. Seem, okay. It seems like you're not being stereotyped with the Halloween, no. No, that's... <laughs> No, but that's that's good though because right. like Halloween right. now 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 when Halloween comes, you will probably also pick up uh, your your gigs because you know just the, the, he 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 locked himself in a, in a time that now yeah. anytime Halloween comes along, Mike Dupree, gonna, the right. name, remember, the ventriloquist right. is going <laughs> to be the guy you want at your party or your event or or anywhere right. that you know right or wrong, Mike. Just because of the movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. And, in the Gilbert Diaries that I appear, I actually don't have a ventriloquist figure with me. I play Colonel Sanders. Well, even though we can't say Colonel Sanders, uh, you, it, when you see it on Netflix, you'll see uh, I'm dressed just like Colonel. <laughs> I'm going to check it out. I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, it's, a, it's a funny, funny program. You'll get to see Paul Veneer and, of course, Frank Medica. I'm looking forward to it, but uh, I want to thank Thanks you so much, you and I'm looking forward to seeing you now in October. Absolutely. Mike Dupree, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Mike. Thanks again, guys. It's thank you great. so much. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> All right. Take All right. care. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, listen. Uh, how, many, now, how many dummies you think he has? Uh, th these figures. guys. Figures. figures I like dummies. Are, I like the word. You know, I like that. You know better. what was funny? He calls them figures. <laughs> But then when he talks, he told us about his dummies. Yeah, I see, I see. Oh my. But uh, all right, well, listen, that pretty much closes off the show.